hi, I'm Alfie Holland from Prospectus IT Recruitment and I'm here at the Rocket U2U Conference 2012 and I've been joined today by Dan McGrath. Dan, thank you for joining me. No problem, Elkin. Thanks. Nice to meet you finally as well. <laughs> it's lovely. After all the email correspondence and things. Yes. Now, Dan, you are um, you joined Rocket quite recently and you seem to be having a reputation for using newer technologies and quite passionate about it. Is that right? Uh, depends. Is that a good thing or not? Uh, yeah, I've been with Rocket for about one year now and it's been fun going around speaking at these conferences on things such as HTML5. Okay. Now, your job actually at Rocket, though, is product manager for multiple projects. How does that work? Yeah, it's been interesting since I've been there. Uh, as you said, I'm product manager there, so I get to work with things such as Unidata and System Builder, Extensible Architecture. Uh, I've got a partner in crime, Dave Peters, and we pretty much just trade off major part projects between us, so we get to work with all the products and handle all the teams and get a good perspective. Are you enjoying it? It's been absolutely amazing. Brilliant. Well, today I actually wanted to talk to you a bit further about HTML5, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Okay, could you just start off by explaining what exactly is HTML5? Sure. It, it probably seems like a pretty simple question, a basic question to ask, <laughs> but you'd be surprised at the variety of answers in when people talk about HTML5. Uh, a common misconception, it wasn't helped by the web standards body, is that HTML5, cascading styling sheets and JavaScript are really the same thing. But they are disparate technologies that just happen to work together to give you that interactive web page. So HTML5 is just the markup itself. But when you use it, you always use it with CSS and JavaScript. Okay, so what sort of benefits would HTML5 give somebody? Yeah, it, it's really working about um, creating a more seamless and interactive experience now. So if you look at some of the older style apps that maybe worked via Ajax pages, you'd tab through multiple pages and hit the back button and then you'd end up back at Google again, which was extremely frustrating. It really broke you out of using that particular web application as an application. So now things like the History API, as you're moving through those pages, you can update that URL. So when they hit back, it responds exactly as they would expect it. And then when you move forward, it goes back to exactly where they are. That's an example of some of the real benefits that you get with HTML5 okay. and JavaScript, because that's a JavaScript function. Mm. Okay, now what other sort of goodies uh, can you have now with HTML5? Yeah, it, there's really is such a wide range of things you can use. There's uh, web workers, because JavaScript previously didn't allow you to have concurrent operation. So if you needed to do some complex calculations and then display that result back in your page, you would have to lock up your application. So when you clicked on the page, it wouldn't respond. Now with things such as web workers, you can do that in the background, allow your user to keep using it like a normal application and bring it back. And there's other things such as web storage. So cookies had a lot of limitations and they would consume bandwidth as it passed it backwards and forwards. So now with local and session storage, really gives you a lot more capabilities in terms of caching and storing on your client. Okay, so history. I mean, with all these things that you're just mentioning, but you haven't said anything about Flash. True, and I think because a lot of setting we work in, in terms of Rocket Software, we're working with enterprise customers with business applications. Now, I'm not going to say Flash is dead and there's no reason to use it, Absolutely, if you're building a game, that's probably still your best bet for an online web-based game. But when you're looking at typical uses for business applications and the things you might do, HTML5, Cascading Style Sheets 3, and the latest versions of JavaScript really do do most of the capabilities that you need now. And it is, generally speaking, a lot easier to work with. Okay. Now, are there any um, offerings for, say, people with disabilities? I remember in one of our conversations earlier, you mentioned something. Yeah, so I guess one of the good things about HTML, just to, to start with, is it has a lot of features built into it around accessibility. So your alternate tags, which the speech readers will come through and they'll be able to translate those tags into text. There's a lot more features being added that go a long way to helping that. So one of the experimental features that's currently in Chrome and maybe in Firefox soon is the proposed speech API. So much like your mobile phones where you can click the speech input button, you can speak and dictate, and it will put it in there. You can now easily add that to your web page. 
it's a couple of keywords you put on the field and all of a sudden you have speech capability. That's cool. Well, it sounds like really good technology, but are there any downsides to using it? Yeah, absolutely. And any new technology, it really is about research and not just using it blindly. You've got to do some research and understand where those limitations are. Uh, one example comes to mind is uh, WebSQL. If you start doing a whole new application and you're entirely dependent upon that, well, it's now a deprecated feature. So vendor, uh, the browser vendors don't have to maintain it to be part of the standard. And people like Firefox have decided that they're just not going to implement it. So if you don't do research when using any new technology, realize, uh, really, you can end up going down the wrong path and having to redo a lot of work or having a system that's going to be very costly to maintain. So it's all about researching to understand the pitfalls before you invest too heavily. Okay. Now, you've been to, uh, the world is talking about mobile and the use of mobile and everything. Obviously, HTML5 is good for creating websites. Why would you create a mobile website over an app? What's That's a good question. And once again, same with Flash, sometimes you wouldn't. Uh, Flash, uh, sorry, in terms of mobile apps, it gives you access to a lot of features that you natively can't do with HTML5 websites. So things such as being in the App Store and using that mechanism to charge for it and being able to download and search for it. And there's other features that are built into your phone, such as the GPS or camera, that you just can't access out of the box currently. But it is a trade-off that you can do. There's things such as PhoneGap or Titanium where you're able to wrap that website into an application and put that into the App Store. So it's sort of, you get the best of both worlds. There are some trade-offs, but it is certainly possible to use HTML5 now and still have that same application style of experience. Okay, so anybody um, who's looking at using HTML5 or investigating it further, have you got any parting advice for them? Yeah, it, it really does come down to research. New technology is amazing and absolutely you need to stay on top of it and look where it's going because it can be harder to play catch up than being at the front. But whenever you're using it, if you're not researching, you could be on the wrong front and end up even further behind or in a lot of trouble. So it is all about being diligent and just staying tuned to what's happening out there. Brilliant. Well, Dan, thank you very much. Thank and you, Alfie. Thank you for your time today. No problem. Good to see you. Thank you.